FBI Director Christopher Wray says the U.S. and its allies have averted a Russian cyber spy uh, operation targeting the U.S. and Europe. For more on this and other geopolitical threats, let's bring in retired four-star uh, Army General David Petraeus. He's a former CIA director and now serves as KKR Global Institute uh, chairman. Uh, General Petraeus joins us from the Munich Security Conference, uh, where he, uh, where Director Ray announced news of the Russian spy operation. Thanks for joining us, and, and you, you must know vastly more uh, about this than we do, uh, General. Can you just fill us in on, on what you've been able to, uh, to to find out about what, what was such a cryptic, uh, the way it was released and everything else earlier this week was was a, a little bit bizarre. Well, look, I'm. Uh, long since serving in government, uh, Joe, and I have, certainly haven't talked to Director Ray. Uh, but there's no end of threats coming out of Russia, without question. Uh, we've had this recent uh, worry, this concern, huge concern about the possibility of some kind of weapon in space, whether it's an actual nuclear weapon in space or a nuclear-powered satellite, uh, more along the lines of some of what we have, that has an electromagnetic pulse weapon. Uh, either of those is, would be very alarming because, of course, we're hugely dependent on positioning, navigation, and timing satellites in space that control so much uh, of what we do in our daily lives, the economy, and, of course, uh, in military capabilities. And then you have this additional threat uncovered and announced by the FBI director, which is, again, completely unsurprising. Russia has been trying for decades to uh, inflame passions in the United States, to play on grievances, to inflame those, uh, to influence our elections, to spy on us, and so forth. Um, so, again, no surprise there. But tragic to hear that uh, Alexei Navalny passed away. Uh, to be candid, I was surprised that he lived as long as he did. He obviously was the most important and most courageous uh, opponent to Vladimir Putin, who, remember, he went back on his own uh, from Germany uh, to Russia to continue his crusade uh, against Putin. Uh, he's been in prison for a long time, very harsh treatment, often solitary confinement, but still occasionally able to get word out. Uh, and now, of course, uh, he, he has passed away. And I, I would wonder whether this was natural circumstances or not. And, and the, the, I guess we shouldn't be surprised with the, the, the way it's announced uh, by, by Russia. He's, he's, they don't even have to explain. They don't even pretend to have to explain what went on, I guess, do they, General? No, no. I mean, this is a country that's led by a brutal dictator who is uh, animated by a grievance-filled, revanchist, revisionist view of history that, of course, led him to invade Ukraine, a country he denies the existence of, uh, the right to exist, if you will. And, of course, here at the Munich Security Conference, all these other issues are very important. But I think the one that is center stage has to do uh, with whether the U.S. is going to continue to support Ukraine yeah. in the way that the bipartisan majority in Congress believes. Uh, and I'm sure Vice President Harris, who's due here in about two hours, uh, will underscore the importance of, and then President Zelensky here uh, tomorrow morning. And I think that is the real issue here, as well as just questions about <laughs> U.S. commitment to NATO and yeah. so on that NATO, have been raised NATO, uh, in NATO recent writ days. Large. Yeah, yes, General, NATO writ large exactly. uh, with, with some of the recent comments. But. Well, General, what do you think of, <clears throat> I guess, the PR campaign that, that Putin has undertaken with Tucker Carlson going there, what social media has kind of done with some of those things to this point? Um, he's certainly making the point for why the U.S. should not continue supporting Ukraine. Well, I'm wholly unconvinced of his argument, uh, which, again, is just full of these manufactured grievances, his, his version of history. Let's keep in mind that this is an individual who, when asked what the worst geopolitical event of the 20th century was, a century that, of course, included two world wars and the Great Depression, responded the demise of the Soviet Union, the dissolution of uh, the USSR. And he's been trying ever since to reassemble as much of it as he can, perhaps the Russian Empire, uh, as a modern-day czar. Uh, and he's done it, in many cases, with very, very brutal means. Uh, the invasion has been—was totally unprovoked. 
and incredibly brutal, and it continues, it, despite the extraordinary losses that Russian forces are sustaining. It, you do wonder if there won't come a time. He's unconcerned by these losses, but Russia's mothers and fathers surely at some point are going to say, my son is not going to enlist. Uh, and you'll see what we saw earlier, which was more Russian men leaving the Federation than actually showing up at the conscription stations. But he's figured out how, with large enlistment bonuses, to continue to replenish his forces, however poorly trained and equipped they are and however also poorly employed they are in almost human wave attacks. Um, but again, that's the issue that's front and center here. It is the continued Russian threat. It has many forms, uh, as we've seen just in the past week. Uh, and again, his long-winded explanation of all of this and his willingness to negotiate, this is all pure fiction. Uh, he does, wants to crush Ukraine, and if he is able to do that, he won't stop there. Moldova, Lithuania, and others will be next on the list. It seems like he's living in a strange world, uh, too, General, because it, it, if he has superpower envy or, or, or misses the, the stature that the USSR had, it's an economic problem, and, and he's done nothing to, to address that. And, and, you know, gaining territory, whether it's, you know, Ukraine or, or the other countries you just mentioned, what, what does that actually mean when, when you gain the territory if you still have a, a, an economy that, that's you know, a tenth of the size of, of, uh, of, uh, of most countries. Well, in fact, his problem is that he could not abide on his border uh, a former Russian Republic or former Soviet Republic, Ukraine, that was actually a successful, thriving uh, democracy with a free market economy. That would show the Russian people what they could be uh, if they had adequate or even decent governance. Uh, look, Russia has been reduced at this point in time. It's a very formidable country, largest nuclear arsenal in the world. But in many respects, uh, it's a gas station with guns. Uh, right. It has huge quantities, of course, of crude oil, natural gas, and coal. It's still able to find markets for that. That's how its economy has survived, despite our efforts uh, with various sanctions and export controls, all of which need to be tightened. And then the evaders going after and so forth, and that's ongoing. But they've managed to sustain. He's now put the economy in a complete wartime footing uh, so that he can sustain this incredibly costly war. And we need to be doing everything we can uh, to help Ukraine, just as, by the way, the Europeans have. They just recently, the EU, as a body, approved $50 billion in, in additional, 50 billion euros, actually, so $54 billion of additional assistance they had already provided two for every one U.S. dollar when you look at it in aggregate. So not just security, but also economic, financial, and humanitarian. Uh, and now this additional tranche, European countries, as the NATO Secretary General mentioned uh, yesterday, are stepping up. This year it appears that 18 of the 31 will meet that 2 percent of GDP uh, on defense goal that has long been established for NATO countries. Uh, and we need to continue to do everything we can to help Ukraine to preserve its independence. This is their war of independence, and we need to help them in that. However flawed democracy and free market economy, they share our values and ideals incomparably more uh, than does uh, Vladimir Putin's Russia.